<laughs> Welcome to the Simple Minds Podcast, where we look to empower and encourage real conversation amongst men everywhere by unpacking topics on self-help, philosophy, and business. Hi, and welcome to the Simple Minds Podcast. It's Matt J. Hannam here, and I'm your host for today. We've got, or we're joined by Conrad Francis. Thanks, Matty. How are you? We actually used your real name, Conrad. Privileged, Kikikonye. And people might actually know me on social now. They might actually at conradfrancis.com.au.in. Oh, dot com. I'm going global. Travis Hato. Travis J. Hato. Hey, hey, in the house. Travis J. Hato. Hey, hey, in the house. Justin. Tiborn. <laughs> Tiborn. What's up? That's how you spell Thomas, right? With the T? Sure. Timon. 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 Yeah, so welcome, gents. Um, we're here for another day, and uh, <laughs> we, we, we survived another day, another episode. Thank you for tuning in. intro. <laughs> and t- today we're going to be talking about how to kick the curse of being busy and be more creative. But to start that off, we're going to... Have a have a, a light beverage, a little creatures Rogers beer, which I brought uh, to the table today, just so we could get a nice light, quick uh, beer this afternoon. Really felt like it was the the right appropriate mood. Roasted caramel malt flavors, balanced with light citrus hop notes and a fine bitterness. To find this easy drinking but full flavored amber beer. Beautiful, fantastic. Cheers. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, it's not a bad Cheers. beer. Cheers. Not bad. Pretty full flavour for a mid strength. Well, yeah, actually, sure is. It's not my great. It my says favorites. three out of seven on the flavour meter on the back of it. Well, shit, my tongue must be frigging <laughs> half, half of that. <laughs> so, all right. So, topic wise, guys, um, where you know how to kick the curse of being busy and be more creative. So. We're pumped by distractions in this modern world all day long, whether it's our phones, just in, in general, you know, there, there's very few occasions where we don't have several different bits of information hitting us all the time. Um, in a Big Think article, uh, bigthink.com article, which I think might have been shared by you, Mr. Kanye, um, the article's name, Being Busy is Killing Our Ability to Think Creatively by Derek uh, Berez, B-E-R-E-S. Not Paul Chapman. Not Paul Chapman. Um, he's only written several books, <laughs> including love languages. But so from Derek. So, and I'll quote this article. Little good comes from being distracted, yet we seem incapable of focusing our attention. Among many qualities that suffer, recent research shows that creativity takes a hit when you're constantly busy. Being able to switch between focus and daydreaming is an important skill that re- is reduced by insufferable busyness. It sort of goes on to share, and I'll see if I can get this name right, but um, from Stanford, um, Emma, I'm not actually sure how to say this, but Sapala, uh, she, she writes that the idea is to balance linear thinking, which requires intense focus with creative thinking, which is born out of idleness. Switching between the two modes seem to be, seems to be the optim, optimal way to do good, in, inventive work. So... I'm raising this um, with you guys for conversation because I'm I'm really sort of pondering this concept or like trying to trying to get some a stronger awareness around this this concept in what I do day to day because I really want to make some adjustments coming into next year coming into 2020 uh, and I want to create some more space to to complete some more creative based projects and activities but also just operate with more creativity day to day because if I look back at that quote. I, I, I realize that I don't really allow myself much time for daydreaming. As much as I love to do that, there's my, I haven't structurally created a lot of space to, to sort of get any depth of daydreaming um, or, or, or not a lot. I mean, I'm sure we, we do, but not, not as much as I, I would like. And I would really like to, um, I'd really like to progress some more creative endeavors. And I feel like it's something that I, um, want to work on creating some structures to to reduce some of the busyness, to reduce some of the distractions, and um, and I guess yeah yeah be more focused on um, creating space to be more creative. I'll start with you, Hado. Um, Absolutely. Uh, with 
and and being that you work in a creative field as well, how do you feel about your general level of busyness and and how that might impact upon you being more creative? Uh, or do you feel like you're um, creative at all be, being creative or do you feel like there's some, you know, there's the structures that are maybe holding you back or, or notifications, things that are holding you back from being creative? Um, early on in my – so I've been uh, – been a pro photographer for about 10 years now and uh early on in my uh photographic journey um you would i'd work every day you know or every second day you know i'd be shooting um and you know the constant busyness uh would finally catch up with you and i'd go through these massive slumps you know so you'd shoot heavy for you know six weeks or whatever and and then you'd just crash for two weeks and you'd just be in major slumps of creativity um you know for for work um now you know it, it's like a muscle because I, I believe creativity is a muscle and and can be taught um and now uh i manage my energy much more efficiently and uh, I shoot even more than I used to. Um, however, I don't have those creative slumps anymore. Um, so I can shoot every day for you know three months straight and still operate at a high level of creativity for work. Um, where my downfall is, I believe, is when uh, you're trying to be creative for yourself. So if I try to go to personal projects, uh, I'm sort of tapped out of creativity for from you know shooting every day from work. Um, you know, I when I was younger, I assisted a um, a great photographer, Juliet Taylor. She came over from Sydney, we were shooting a big campaign for the races, and uh, she in on the east coast. It's very uh, agency based. You generally as a creative, you work for an agency, and the agency that she worked for they actually kind of force them into doing 50% paid work and then 50% project work for themselves for that exact reason. So I've kind of gone into like 100% paid work and, you know, slipped into zero work for myself. Um, you know, and the, I, was, I was asking her about it and she was saying that uh, the reason for that is to really bring the creativity out on the paid, you know, client work too. Um, it was quite interesting. So I tried to do that for a certain amount of time, uh, but then it's hard to say no to clients going, oh, we need it done this week. So now I just slipped into, you know, just doing all all my sort of client work. Um, yeah, so I, I would say there's an element of uh, being too busy to be creative uh, for sure. Uh, I've done it for so long now that, I've kind of um, trained myself not to um, get too much in a slump. I find that when my really great creativity comes along is when um, I'm not as busy and I have those intimate times in between jobs, if it's day or two or a couple of days and I could really daydream and get into the next thought and I'll go, well, how do I create this to make it, you know, next level? Um, yeah, so I would, I'd agree with the statement that as business creates impact, you know, impacts your creativity. J- JB uh, did something recently with, with his blank canvas team. You created that Canvathon, or mm. um, which obviously you guys are a busy studio, uh, but you took some time out to allow their allow their juices to flow. Mm. You want to talk us through that? <laughs> sure. I think that that's yeah. similar to what you were yeah. talking about. Yeah, look, I think, um, and, and a few of my team members have stressed this sometimes uh, here and there. You know, we've had a a pretty big kind of six six months, seven or eight months um, working through a, a lot of work, and sometimes it does become it can feel a little bit mundane. And, and as some people have expressed, it can be difficult to work, you know, all day doing paid work and then try to do personal projects uh, on the side. It can be quite exhausting. Um, yeah, and so we, we've we done this probably on average once a quarter. We try to, in the studio, do a thing called a Canvathon, which is um, our version of a, of a hackathon where we create um, some a bit of a competition uh, to essentially have... Well, it's not free reign because there's still a brief, 
but it's a bit more creative um, and they've got a lot more freedom to, to do it. There's not the client constraints uh, attached to it. And the results are just amazing. Like, um, yeah, I loved what I saw on LinkedIn. When you give um, people a little bit of that space to, to kind of do what they, they want, um, you get some amazing stuff. And I think it's a pretty hard, it's a pretty unreasonable expectation um, on the team, which I've had this expectation in the early days, not so much now for your creative team members to push the boundaries on every project because it's just um, unfeasible. Um, you know, when I, uh, the, the work that was produced was, was amazing. Um, there's a, we could go two ways here. Um, one thing on the topic of creativity, though, is I, I feel like you do need um, a, a framework. We, we used a lot of the word structure. So, for example, a lot of the guys perform well when there is a set deadline. So when we do these canvathons, the like you have to submit by 6 p.m. And if you are a minute later, your work is deleted, um, not fully deleted, but you can't submit. And that tension and that, that limit does also – um, enable a lot of creativity uh, as well and because they express how they'll start personal projects and they never ne – sometimes a lot of the time they don't finish <laughs> because they just lose motivation yep. or there's no deadline or there's no pressure um, or, or objective and so that external deadline um, really pushes them. Um the other and what what was the, was it a deadline? Was there an incentive? What was the yeah, it was a prize. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think with a lot of people who make stuff, uh, whether it's graphic design, photography, video, there's a lot of pride to their to their work and what they do. Um, so just to win, generally from the better ones, uh, always comes out that competitive nature and uh, trying to prove themselves um so that's generally more the driving motivator the prize is generally negligible <laughs> um because yeah human nature takes here's, over here's a bottle of oyster bay wine <laughs> yeah here's a season <laughs> bintangs trev's got a case full um but one other avenue of kind of like the busyness like for example i've been running the business and trying to do creative for a long time and i struggle um and for many years, I could only do creative work in the evenings um, when I was not in the office because it's just way too many distractions. I just couldn't produce the actual work within the studio. Um, so, you know, there was just dealing with emails, clients, unlimited distractions all day. Um, and it's probably fair to say that it does impact the the quality um, of your work. Yeah, because because your your that part of your brain is not functioning right. So yeah, I, I can I can understand that. What yeah. we've done recently, because um, usually on our Monday meetings we we usually put a piece of personal development stuff in there, not professional but just to to, to and we used to circle that around. Um, and it was it was getting some good traction, but. I wasn't getting what I wanted, which was, you know, people talking about things that were passionate to them out in their social spaces. So now we've just created that morning, you know, up until 9.30 to, to when they're going to present to the team is, you know, anywhere between Monday to Monday, they need to produce a piece of content for themselves that they're going to share um, in social spaces. So, you know, I was wondering how we're going to get this done, but, you know, you've got to, you've got to give them some space in the time that, they, that you know, they, they would have used to create work to create pieces of content. Now I've got... You know, I've had just in the last week two blogs written um, by by staff members that have never even written a blog before. So you know, it's interesting how, how when you give them some space and an opportunity and put a deadline and expectation in place. I think deadline and structure is very yeah. important because that's why I don't do anything per for personal because I don't put a deadline on it and then it doesn't. So like the penny drop, you know, he created that deadline and then you know that's how. Sorry, the the way. No, I fucked it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Yeah. No, anyway, the the structure and deadline I think is a very important yeah. aspect purpose. of it. So purpose. so you you give them the framework, right? So can I can I broaden this now? Um, so we're talking about creative people, uh, like creative vocations. We're talking about obviously three D, um, three D and animation and people in that space. And financial planning is really financial. Creative. I'm really impressed that you've got financial planners to write blog articles, Conrad. I mean, it's 
definitely a cheaper option. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I can see how it makes sense. <laughs> but, um, but, um, but no, because often, and look, I come from a finance background, most people in that financial space will just immediately throw this wall up and say, look, I'm not creative. And and they are. They, they, there's, they're often having to problem solve, do different things. There's a lot of creativity. So I want to I want to broaden that to just anyone, you know, and everyone who needs um, or, or we want some creativity. I still think with, with the situation of busyness and with so many notifications on our phones and, and so much going on all the time, I mean... We're consuming I, five times as much information as 25 years prior outside of the work we process, right? So that's outside 100,000 words work. every day. 100,000 words every day, five times as much from 25 years ago. So that's huge, right? So what I, what I, what I want to ask you, uh, your thoughts on then, Conrad, are... Uh, my my sentiment is that in the absence of having the time, we're just going to immediately follow the process or the thing that we know and how to do. So we don't bring any creative thinking into any problems that we have or other things because we don't have time to even stop and think about it. So how do you, you know, how do you create space or how do you um, find what a way to create? Me personally? Well, I mean, or, or just your thoughts because I think it's not just about like the creatives, right? Yeah. Um, it's about everybody. And if we're getting smashed by all this, this I, noise, I, and I how do we But I consider myself creative, right? I mean, because from an entrepreneurial perspective, our, our job is to solve problems. Well, Everyone's creative. I guess that's, yeah. what I'm, that's what I'm saying. But also with so much noise... I feel like we don't have time to necessarily think through creative endeavors. So how do we how do we do that? Well, you've got you've got to create the space and time, mate. I mean, I, I do. Um, you know, I, I can't make more minutes in a day, but I can create more time by not wasting time. You know, that's something that people don't don't pay any credit to. I think the numbers were like the average person spends a hundred hours a week or something really ridiculous watching some sort of TV or, or some sort of video component. It's ridiculous the amount of time they spend. Yeah. No, no. So the, no. Well, I think it's no. It's a, it's a <laughs> hundred hours a week of videos. It's, it's a stri- no. Well, you talk. You, well, you look at TV. People will watch TV from five o'clock or five thirty when they get home till ten thirty, eleven o'clock at night, mate. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a large chunk of time. Um. Then you watch what they're watching their phones and watch what what, what they're watching in their computers. I mean, you, the numbers it may not be a hundred, but it's 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 it's, it's significant. Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, I don't waste my time in that space. So, one question for you specifically, because probably more than anyone else I know, um, I I feel like you communicate on Messenger. Yep. Um, at quite a high level, like I'd be interested yep. to look in your phone and see how much. Yep. And you're it's always my, it's, it's it's my biggest tool. Yeah. And you're always communicating with at least a handful of people at once. Your phone is forever going off. How do you do? You, do you have do you have quiet patches between that? Does that run twenty four seven for you? I mean, and then how do you if you're communicating and going back and forth? Have you just learnt to sit that at a superficial level whilst you're let's say working through some some deep work? Or how do you how do you deal with that yeah, level I, of look, notification? It's, it, it is funny, right? Because I've 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 looked at how I use my phone. I do have timers on my socials and stuff like that. Uh, Messenger for me is no different to uh, SMS, so I treat that with the same level of, of importance if someone messages me on there. Um, but, mate, I, I guess I, I just don't allow myself not to get shit done. I mean, if I'm going to stuff around on Messenger for a while, most of my, my messages on Messenger are, are real to real people. I mean, there's a bit of banter in there every now and then. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying yeah, if but, you're having five conversations at once – and trying to solve a deep problem, how do you how do you balance doing both? Just, or do I just you don't? I, I don't know whether it's a balance. I just don't not do it. It's priming your mindset to be in the creative space. So if you're not willing to be in the creative state space in the first place to enable yourself to uh, tackle the project or the decision or the choice that needs to be made, I guess I get, I, I've also gotten better with delegation. Are parts of tasks, um, not doing the whole task. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but I no, I genuinely have noticed. You, you have well, got a lot better at it, which has allowed you much more freedom. Yeah, I mean, to, I, to do the communication and then think and not a lot else necessarily. Yeah, because I mean, I'm, I'm I'm highly, I'm I'm highly strategic and visionary, and I think you know, I waste time on the ma- on the micro, um, so then. Don't waste time on the micro, but waste time communicating it and letting it go and then pulling it back. And the good thing I've got with people around me at the moment is that they're really efficient, so that stuff's coming back to me real quickly and that's keeping me moving. So today I went into the office, 
you know, I smashed out a couple of things in, in three hours um, and then came here. And what I did in three hours, you know, was was pretty was some pretty big work. And when I when I left, can you share? Uh, yeah, generally, well, yeah, just just going over some contracts, re- rewriting some clauses, and um, and then getting them back to the lawyers. Like, like I mean, re- writing a clause yeah, in a contract—that's pretty heavy work. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, when you know what you want and you know the questions to ask, um, you know. So I had a few other people feed me in parts of their different contracts that they've used in the past. I've then looked at that and I've reread some stuff online. So I was very specific. Um, with the work I did, um, and you know, managed to get it out, and then okay, well, I need you to sign that. I need you to read that. I need you to do this, and bang, done. Um, and it's off my desk. You know, so I, so I, I worked on one referral agreement, worked on one um, a loan agreement, um, and and three clauses. Good. So, but you got to know what you want, and you got to know what you're good at. Yeah. But so the moral of the story is you you can you can seem to just continue to focus on what it is. I mean, I guess it's different to ha- when you have a task versus maybe a, a problem that you're trying to like solve or find a new creative so way to problem work. Problem in space. So I mean, I, you guys know, depending on how big the problem is, if I need space, um, I'll I'll generally take time out of my office and I'll go for a walk in a park and stuff, um, and and create the mental space because I don't I don't perform well under pressure. Um, so I've got to remove the pressure to allow myself to, to. I guess don't get me wrong. I get shit done, but I'm not operating my best. If that makes any sense. So if I've got the ability to take pressure off me, so that I can get creative and I can start seeing what I'm not seeing, because when we're under stress and pressure, what we've got to understand is that uh, we're constricting ourselves. You know, we're not breathing as much. We're not seeing as much. We're not smelling as much. You know, we we are really desensitizing ourselves, and we become very narrow minded and very narrow sighted. Um, when you start to breathe into the situation, when you start to give yourself space into the situation, you start to open up things, colours, spaces, pictures, people, you know, and solutions become apparent that weren't necessarily there before. Um, and it's really important that you actually create that space just by giving yourself um, some, some, you know, some methodologies. Well, I guess that's what the point of the, you know, these articles are saying, well, you know, the, the whole idea and... Um, you know, it's it's something that I've acknowledged uh, that I need to improve upon, and particularly even if you're leading a team to truly serve, um, say your team or others, you need to create that that space to avoid that you're not in that stress state um, on a continual basis because you're not serving anyone um, well by that. And you know, you entertain the distractions. And um, you know, I have read the book Deep Work by Cal Newport. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, we've joked about this, um, I think, between us where like there's a particular little project and it's like, oh, that thing took three months and four hours. Yep. It, it, what I mean by that is it took four hours in a block, but you've been sitting on it for three months. And I've had thousands of them over the last yeah. like I mean, cu- all, couple yeah. of years. But um, that's because it's not important to you until the death knell. Yeah. And and you're entertaining the distractions yeah. um, too much. And then, you know, your mental ability, there are some conflicting, well, different views on willpower. But, you know, some people say it's finite and then you only have a certain amount throughout the, the day. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as the day progresses, if you're tired and stressed by all of these things, like, the you know, the thought of some of those stats of how much we're consuming you know, when you think about how many emails you might be reading and responding, um, it's just it's just crazy. And I've realized that I probably act too much from a busyness state, which allows you only to get superficial stuff. You know, it's funny, like you'll be working away dealing with emails and all this other stuff for say like three days. And then you will say, I'll go to a conference or I'll go away. And I haven't changed anything, but the problems don't actually really get any different. No, it was just like how you see a problem does. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, I could have taken out half a day of my week to finish off that project, but I chose to entertain my inbox, mm. and then the inbox just consumes you for the next yeah, I've got a hundred, four hours. I've got over 100,000 unopened emails in my inbox. Yeah, your phone's that, next that, level. That fucks with people, <laughs> and, I, and I don't really give a shit. No, I, get stuff, I get the stuff done that I need to get done, and, and if I want to come back to those other 100,000, so I mean, it is there. I don't give a shit about them. How, well, sorry. I think one of them's yours. Let, I think one of them's yours. To tell you the truth, when you sent me some some information yesterday or this morning. Let's go into email management. Just very, very. Briefly. No, fuck it. I don't want it. No, 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 no. I do. No. So how do you, how do you roll through it? So you just roll back, pick the point that you think you've read 
read up to, um, you know, let's say you go roll in this morning. I won't, if I open an email, I read an email. If I don't open it, I won't. I won't read it. Yeah, but how do you? Because you don't not catch emails. You tend to. I catch important if, ones. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people that will email me shit, mate. I mean, no, of course there is. That's so, what I'm saying. But yeah. like, so to catch the important ones, yep. you just when you open it back up again, you scroll back to the last point at which uh, I don't even know how you know because you've got they're all unopened. Uh, so, but you find a way. You scroll back to that point, and you just skim up, and then you just yep. do that next time. Yep, mate. I've gotten I've gotten very clear with the fact that if the shit needs to be done, it'll be done, and it will be done. Um, there's a lot of stuff there that you don't need to worry about. You know, I, I get I get mailed a lot of stuff by people to review. I think I don't my my opinion isn't that important, particularly if someone just wants me to do it as a favour to them. You know, fine, no worries. When I've got time to do the favour, I'll do the favour. But most of the time, I've got work to do. You know, I know where my emails are coming from that I need to attend to. Oh, fuck, I know I'm, I'm hyper vigilant around that shit, um, and that shit gets done. Um, and anything that I assign to people has an absolute watermark time time frame on it, you know. But anyone that wants to issue me with emails to review something, well, fine, I'll get done when I need to get done. Now I've got, you know, I've, since I was twenty five years of age, I've worked Saturdays, right, half a day if not a full day on a Saturday. That to me, I swear to God to you, that to me is worth like two or three days in the office. Um, and you, know, you guys have been in my office at various times. You know, it's a bit hectic, but you know, that's worth two or three days to me. You know, no one's around. You know. I'm there usually in the morning. No one's around. I'm there, yeah. past when anyone goes, no one's around. But the ability to do focused work, I think, is is a is a bit of a skill. Um, and you know, I've attempted to use the the blocks uh, on my phone. That's and it's gold. Such, and it's such a bad habit, like to just keep checking your phone here or there. Like we are addicts to it. Um, yeah. Most but, of us. But how do you use the tool, right? But you'll still you'll still check it like just for the sake of checking it sometimes. Um, and yeah, well that's what that's what the, that's what notifications has done to us. It's conditioned yeah. us, right? And you can switch them off. I know people that have. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't. I don't let my phone dictate how efficient I am. I mean, I may not be efficient. I, I walked into a meeting once, and they said, Conrad, you know, and this was a meeting out of my office. They said, you know, you're always on your phone. I said, yeah, well, I wasn't always on my phone, and I wasn't here with my mobile phone. I couldn't see you today. You know, so I, I get the pros and cons to it. But I don't let shit like that affect me. Yeah. But I think creating creating the space uh, is powerful to be able to, to de- do deep work. And I think a lot of people are struggling to be able to have that skill. I mean... Uh, but, we, it, but we use... I think this is what this article talks about. We use busyness as a fucking excuse. Yes. Mm. All right? And that's the problem. It's not the fact and that we're, we're all busy. Guilty. We're not, it's not the fact that we're busy. If you're busy loving doing what you fucking do, then you're the best person on the... You're in the best place in the world. But I think we also create... We, we create busyness. We keep creating we, more so, and more so, the, so those that create busyness but get nowhere, I, I liken to people that are getting, you know, you're talking about um, um, a, sinking, a sinking feeling on, on a bit of on quicksand or a bit of soft sand with, with a car. You're spinning your tyres because you don't have a fucking reason why. Again, we talk about this all the time. If you've got focus, you've got the ability to do deep work. Okay, without focus, who who the fuck is going to sit there and do a piece of work for seven, eight, ten hours straight? Which I mean, I've I've been locked down fucking back to back days on one bit of work. Why? Because if I fucking don't, who the hell's going to do it? There's parts of there's parts of this puzzle that you have to do. You know that. You know that, and you know that. You know, there's parts, but then there's other parts other people need to do because they need to feel like they they're adding some value to the to the food chain. So the other part of it, I guess, is then creating the urgency for some of these things. Like, so, for example, I talked on. I want to. There's some additional creative type activities that I want to do next year. Yep. Um, and I, I guess it's it's in taking that activity and and binding it in to the wire to to force. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's got it's got to intertwine. Yeah. So Otherwise, you'll find a reason not to do it. So that's the answer in in many ways because. And, and there's always, well, we want to do this, we want to do that, but you've got to actually bind it in to be, uh, otherwise you, it'll ne- never get any focus. No, because it's not important it. enough. Yeah. It's not important enough. I mean, again, you know, I don't, I, I don't know about you guys, but you don't do the work you don't want to fucking do. Well, it sort of backs my, I, I, you mentioned it briefly, Haido, before, but it also backs my thing that, you know, creativity is, you can have some natural creativity, but really it's something that you can develop. And because, again, 
I'd love to be able to just quickly pluck an example right now, but when, when you see, say, for example, a some people in a in a natural disaster or something else, it's fucking amazing the amount of creativity that we can have to solve a problem that our life depends on it is unbelievable whether that's like trying to reach someone who's about to say die or whatever that looks like we can do some incredible things which is basically proof that we, we're all capable of it and you can develop that creativity more but when there's a when there's a when there's a deadline, when there's something yeah, that needs I'll, to happen, you, you'll, find a, you'll find well, a way. The, the people in this article they talk about, they talk about Nikola Tesla, they talk about Einstein, they're talking about, um, yeah, where is it, some, some other guys in this thing. But these guys did some big bodies of work. All right? but, it, but they, I think the, the other thing as well is that we are living in a day and age where everyone's kind of putting hustle and pedis- uh, on a pedestal and put all this busyness on like you have to be keeping like doing all of the, this work. But I think the point of like we're coming back to those guys, they were very focused and intentful of what they were trying to achieve. And I don't think you have to be working all day, every day. That's going to limit you're not going to be able to produce your best work. It's going to limit your creativity. Like I was in Bali and the Bali, they just sit around. Um, and, but they get stuff done and they're just taking a Bali slower, time. slower pace. Yeah. And then there's the, the fifth disciplines, the, the book. And I shared an article about that where there's a philosophy. And this is something that I've been sitting on lately is like, go slow to go fast. Um, and I guess you kind of have touched on it in some respects of like doing that focus one project, getting it done um, um, rather, you know, which will enable you to, you know, whatever, however long it takes, go slow to go fast and get it off your plate and move on. Um, and that's a really interesting concept uh, to but me you guys because have all, we're taught all with deadlines, right? Because we're all taught the opposite. All through university, I guarantee you wouldn't have fucking done your, your assignments two weeks before they were due. Last minute, mate. I did my entire semester – well, I did nothing my entire so, semester. I got to yeah. the last week <laughs> and I mapped out a perfect grid of schedule yep. of how, how I can get three hours on every subject and just fit it in just before every exam and then did that. Exactly. So you work with the deadline. I mean, it says here about Tesla. Sorry, JB, I was, I was interrupting earlier. Tesla had an insight about the rotating magic fields on a leisurely walk in Budapest. Or Einstein, you'd like to chill out and listen to Mozart on breaks from intense thinking sessions. You've got to create the space. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever you do, whether it's going for a walk and hugging a tree, Hato, or, <laughs> or um, you know, going, going, going down to Hyde ducks. Park and talking to ducks, man. I actually reckon the ducks fucking talk to me. I, I say that to them. So what do you got me today? This is a problem I'm dealing with. I fucking talk to those stupid things. They're not stupid. They're not stupid. No, they're wise. <laughs> <laughs> they got me build more business. <laughs> but uh, it says here that you're, you're pondering on this right now. So what are you actually pondering on for 2020? I'm pondering on um, creating creating a bit more space and and focusing on getting like setting some deadlines for those projects which just linger and seem to take up time in and amongst the other just activities that need to happen and um, and I just want to I want to I want to get to a place where I I turn up every day and I, the list of action items to be done is less and a lot of that will come around by way of uh, focused. I guess le- more leveraging out and um, delegation is where some of it will come from. Um, well, that's delegating into your team and also at home. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's both ways. So that's probably where most of the space will come from, and um, and then it's just creating some structures to keep myself accountable. But that's that's largely what I I want to work on, um, and and that's 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 what I want to focus on next year because I have I have some things that I really want to get done, and I'm I so don't. How much time do you actually spend dreaming? That's a hard one. I don't know. So, I I mean, I do daydream, but I don't ever – I don't really that often get time to just sit there and daydream for half an hour on something. I I don't – But you know you you can actually dream through conversation. Have you guys ever done that? You know, talked about what is you you, you see in the world or what is you want from the world Mm. and and people. I mean, there have been some of my my most powerful conversations is where you sit there with someone and you share with them how you see the world, you know, today and in the future. Um, You know, there's some interesting conversations. And I, and I get that you actually are able to do a lot of it through through continued conversation as well. Like it seems obvious to me that you're like you having these constant communications, but you're able to 
to keep in that flow and dream through that process. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Whereas sometimes, um, for me, I, I think I separate it, whereas, like, I'm having those conversations and they're great, but then in my in my construct, I've constructed this position where that's, okay, that's cool, but then I'd really love to go and get some time to go and work on this, whereas it doesn't necessarily have to be the case. That's just the way I've constructed it in my own mind. Yeah. Well, I came across um, someone who's sharing their morning routine, I can't remember who it is, I'll have to stick it out, where they intentively spend... 15 minutes or half an hour just daydreaming or imagining and like and then he doodling or who would yeah. just doodle for 15 minutes and then they would write it down where it's like oh i want to be oh, i wouldn't be so cool to be a pilot and fly over the amazon river and you know like and just kind of start the flow of that in the morning and then kind of jot these things down um and uh, i thought that was really fascinating uh to to play with um to because it is a muscle, I do agree, and I do think everyone has has creativity too. Um, and creativity is not just the form of artwork or visuals or something like that. Um, you know, being creative in a deal uh, yeah. is, is is everything, and that's, that's where we talk stuff. about the the tension. Um, you know, where you have to set up the the framework, and I think building the structures because delegating is not that easy. Like, sorry. In the early days, it's not easy and you get better at it. Um, and it's been something that's been a massive struggle for me to let go and have trust in others to be able to deliver what you want. And I guess eventually you build a team where, you know, that becomes easier and easier. Um, we don't have to be involved um, but to create we, space. But we do know that we're, we, regardless of how you want to frame this, you're always creating. You're always creating, all right, because – you're either creating towards what it is you want or you're dissolving yourself and creating towards what you're prepared to tolerate. Well, and that's accept. what I, I, I think we, that's what I'm saying about this creation of the business because we create it. Like, yeah. But so but the, we're creating it or we can create it as a distraction if not for serving our higher vision and purpose of what we're out there trying to achieve. So it sets us a, oh, shit, I'm so busy. Why? Oh, because I'm just communicating with so, a so bunch is, of people about the, nothing. Or, but is you the could business be, going, you taking it forward, or is it holding you back? What, right. What's the business doing for you? Well, it you? depends on what you're, you're actioning and what you're achieving. Well, it's funny when you just said that. Like, this is what I was saying before, is like there's almost a, um, a thing in today's society, and I, I believe there are some articles written on this. It's like when you ask someone how you're going, it's almost like a – a badge of busyness. Oh, you must be like really busy as if like, that's a good thing. Um, oh, you know, you probably you guys have been like probably really busy the last few months. That sounds really good or rah, rah, rah. And it's like, Oh, how are you been? Yeah. Busy, really busy. Oh, rah. you know, whereas I like, just turn around and go, you know, Oh, it's been fuck all. I've been doing fuck all. People be like, Oh, and then probably judge you in the opposite. I mean, there's a, a definitely a massive shift of this idea of the busyness is good. Um, and it's probably the opposite. And I, I feel that it doesn't serve others by being constantly uh, and yourself busy. Well, when people say to me, you know, and I answer, people ask me, you know, how you been? And I say, yeah, I'm busy, but I know what it feels like not to be. And that's and that generally shuts them up. Um, because, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't believe I, I don't believe I waste time with busyness as an excuse. I don't think I do. No, I, I, you don't. I've never. I don't think I've ever heard you waste time through business. So I just want to run through another article just before we wrap this up, guys. And um, I did also share with you an ink article of nine ways to become more creative. And I'm just curious to run through this list and see if you disagree or agree or um, have anything to add. But if you don't feel like you are creative, Do, doodling's can, on there. Yeah, doodle, mate. Of course it is. It's number one. Look at my. I'm, a little bit, but look at the. I think that's um a really important thing. But so number one on the list, right? If you don't think like you are creative or can be creative, just like why don't you you pick off something small on the list and and get started? But the number one thing is just to doodle something, just draw something on your page. Um, sign up for a class and something you've never done before. Um, create the environment. You know that's I think really important as well, just to get the space right. If you um don't feel like you're ready to be creative, it's um it's. I don't think it's the only way, but because um, I think a lot can be created in chaos as well. But having said that, it's um, if you feel like you need to clear the space, and often I feel better if I want to work on something creative by getting rid of everything else um, out of the way. Pause and brainstorm and move, move the body. Start a sketchbook. Keep toys on your desk. Engage in flash fiction. 
um, which is basically, like, I think, writing like tiny little hundred word stories. So anyone can write a hundred words. Well, most people should be able to write a hundred words and create a story. Well, they're reading a hundred thousand day, mate. <laughs> Surely they can write a hundred. <laughs> That's it. Um, and then there's a thirty circles test, which um, and and role playing. So the thirty circles is just basically just writing or drawing a bunch of circles on a page and just turning them into something. I don't know Mickey Mouse or whatever. But um, you know, so that's. And I, talking back to the financial piece, which we mentioned before, like everyone does have and, and is creative, creative in a way and sometimes you just may or may not need one of these little activities to, to kickstart you and, and just get you thinking in that vein. What do you guys think about those? And do you think, do you think those are the kind of activities that would help you and, and be more creative or did, do you did, see it a different way? Did you guys ever see Travis's uh, kissing around the world stuff? Probably unfortunate. No. So that's pretty creative with with some of the white places you took photos and stuff. Yeah. You're not doing that much at the moment? Oh, we're not travelling as much. Well, I'm, sorry, I'm not saying you have to start keep kissing around them, but, but that yeah, wasn't kissing, a bad little project. Kissing around the yeah, house. That, that was actually designed because I, when to I went travelling. off? No. <laughs> no, I didn't actually do much of that. But um, when we went travelling was to um, get me to take photos because <laughs> I kind of just liked a bit of a break. And then I was like, no, we're travelling to all these amazing places. We should have nice photos of each other. You, you, yeah, well, okay. So, and then that sort of – and then that started. And then once I started, I was like, oh, this is cool. So, that, yeah, that's what – it was a bit of a project with a, you know, with some structure. <laughs> I think um, the environment piece is super uh, important. And then just starting, like just start yeah. and just kind of like see where it starts yeah, to evolve. evolve. Um, and you might – start a little project and then you kind of come back to it here or there. But I think you can't discount the, you know, which is why like where the best ideas come from people like the shower or the penny drops or those, you can't discount the breaks. And like for travel, like for me, travel is amazing for creativity and, and space. Like I, I love it um, because you just, yeah, it gets you out of the, the busyness. Well, you're out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And you just get out of the distractions that you have um, in your day to day. Um and uh yeah just kind of um st starting i guess but you know like heading into 2020 i think the biggest thing for me will be similar of cr looking how to create more structured space and being disciplined to that through delegation of of tasks uh you know and um i'll, I'll say to you be careful with structuring creativity in a sense that i'll sorry Structuring space, yeah, not not cre creativity um, per se, yeah, yeah. Structuring yeah. space. There's not enough. I don't have enough uh, space that's intentful to just think and ponder. Um, and you know, I think it's not allowing. One of my goals is to serve my team better, and I get distracted by everything else, which doesn't allow me to have the time to serve them. Um, or bring ideas or concepts. And there's something you do really well, Conrad, which I think where Matt was going, was that you, know, you will f um, be able to – you create these spaces and then like fling out all these great articles that will serve people or you'll find time to spend with people to serve. Um, but that's my why, right? My why yeah. is, to, is to is bring the best out of people. But there's got to – something's got to give because you only have so many hours in the day, but then that – comes back to what you've shared which is delegation and how you structured your business and your team um which is is fascinating so like you know if you've got responsibilities in your business that you have to be the one that does it then you're going to restrict yourself from that space which is kind of what i'm talking about yep. um so it's like hiring people to do other bits and pieces it might you know it's doing that uh self-audit on yourself how many hours of the day are you doing of your like these tasks are probably not the best use of your time right now. Yep. So how do you get rid of, say, yeah. 20 hours in the week? Well, that, that, so you 40 gotta, hours. So you've got to value your time. Yeah. Um, and then you've got to deliver with it, right? And then when you start delivering with it, then people around you want to work for you more. Yeah. Because um, I think that's a similar thing of what you're suggesting too, Matt, right? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Like one thing, for example, I've noticed, like I'll read a lot of or see a lot of great articles come past and then someone might go, you know, what's something great you've read? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like it's, 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 it's been taken in at a superficial level and I haven't had the clarity of headspace to catch that, bring that back through. And like I see you do that a lot. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's one of the things. I just think there's, there's too many 
I, I've allowed or I allow too many tasks and things to, to be on my must get done every day list rather than just finding a bit of clarity in space which is also going to allow some blocks of time to do that other creative it's work. It's all illusionary, right? I don't know whether you guys remember the end, end scene in The Matrix with um, uh, Neo um, dodges the bullets at the end. Do you guys remember that when he's bending backwards? No. no. Yep. Really? I don't think anyone's ever said that. It's so the reality is that do, the, the, the aspect of dodging bullets or dodging the reality is all about managing time and space and understanding that you know it, it, everything's an illusion. And everything's a construct. So, you know, when you understand that, then you really have time elasticity and figure out what you want to do with your time. Yeah, well, one of the suggestions in the article was to check going to your socials and emails once a day and it's like, could you do that? Yeah. Like that's another level. You, you, you have the time. You, you have imagine. the time. Um, you have as much time as uh, what Steve Jobs does. Or did. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> he got no time. Um, fuck, I could have picked, picked a number of people that are still alive. I picked you could jobs. have picked about 7 billion people. Or you have the same amount of time as Gates. Or you have the same amount of time as, um, as who's the dude from Facebook? Bloody Zuckerberg. You have the same amount of time as all those dudes, like Musk. Um, we've all got the same amount of fucking time. But guess what? They seem to be getting more done with their time. It's all illusionary. It's all a fucking illusion. That's it. So, gents, did you enjoy the beer? Yeah, it's better than the last two fucking drinks we had. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking we need to bring more members to the table just to get a better variety of drinks. Well, that's um, something you can ponder over <laughs> after this episode. You can daze no, it. Ask the ducks. <laughs> bring a duck right. in. No, thanks. I, I, um, I enjoyed that, guys. Um, yeah, it's as I said, it's something that I've been considering. A lot of, a lot of where I'm at, I think, is um, some delegation of additional items to allow a bit of um, other freedoms and uh, Trevor already just, packed up, mate. Yeah, I know. That's okay. The episode's not over yet. Um, <laughs> He's fucking taking his headset off and everything. Jesus my, Christ, my ears are hurting. <laughs> he, he needs to brush his hair. So, thank you for joining, uh, guys. We'll see you next week, and uh, until next time, goodbye. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to the Simple Minds podcast. If you like our show and want to know more, then check out our website at simplemindspodcast.com. If you like, you can even leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or share this episode with a friend. The Simple Minds Podcast is also on Facebook, Insta, and for those that like to keep things formal, LinkedIn. So follow us there if you want to keep up with the latest updates from the show. See you next week.